Norwegian Grandmaster Simon Agderstein. Yeah. Uh, okay, he must have uh, held on to the draw then yesterday. We, yes. left, we left the last game out this time against uh, Alexander Shabalov, where Shabalov maybe missed a win mm -hmm. right towards the end. We and can see here the. Uh, now, Simon for me is somebody who always seems to work hard at the board. Mm -hmm. yeah, he, he has the white pieces again. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yes. And. Uh, He's somebody who is not known for his opening theory at all. He's known for his great will, his uh, fighting spirit, and he generally works very hard over the board. He gets these very positions with a lot of uh, tension. Yeah. Often he's in time. Playing very aggressively. All the pawns here on the, on the, yes, on the fourth he's grabbing space. Or the fifth. It came from a, all the space. A, uh, s a strange looking slab where you played F3. Slab with F3. Again, very much in his style to get out of. Uh, Sharp opening theory. Yeah, so and it looked uh, more like a Karakhan in first yes, yes, but uh, okay, let's just go to the. N well, I mean, it, it sort of ended up being a like a French, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. And basically, of course, the light squared bishops got swapped off. I think Simon would be pleasantly happy with this position because he likes having space advantage. He likes sitting with his opponents, pushing hard, but I don't think black is in any grave danger, although f6, f4 is. Dangerous because mm -hmm. now you have to worry about the, the thematic breakthroughs on f5, etc. But it's interesting when you have a position like this where there's still queens and minor pieces on, and both kings are on e1 and e8. It's very unusual. Mm -hmm. Very often, we always used to get taught that you waited, mm -hmm. and if white castle king said, you would castle king said as well, etc. Yeah. Yeah, that's and funny. This reminds me, I actually, once played a game uh, in the Icelandic Championship which lasted, I think, 48 moves mm -hmm. against Grandmaster Thorson. And neither of us uh, moved the king the whole game. And I actually found out later that it's a world record for the longest uh -huh. game without either side moving. I was going to say the, the famous sort of uh, Tim Crabbe. Yeah, I, 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 found, I found it on Tim, Tim oh Crabbe's side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know, go. of course, but, know. but he collects these records. Mm -hmm. Very interesting side, by the way. Yes, yes. Uh, Tim Crabbe, a, a Dutch... Uh, writer and uh, yeah. very famous uh, lover of chess and uh, yes he collects unusual records yeah and uh, brother of Jerome Crabbe a Dutch actor as well of course okay anyhow uh, we can see this position that's happened yeah. it takes uh, g4 uh, yes a, a little bit committal yeah but, but okay on the other hand he's hoping to secure some uh, squares for his yes, knights yes. in the future but yeah like you said it's also committal because well I'm assuming he takes. Mm -hmm. uh, for the moment, this is under attack, so, so we can't go to F5 mm -hmm. just yet. And yeah, I think I think Black uh, by playing this move is basically committing to going to the other side of the board, of course, yeah. because he can't play I H takes he G he and Castle uh, King. He can never Castle King that here. You know, I think that uh, maybe putting the King on B7, B8 in the long run is a far more safe position, as it were. Mm -hmm. I I think that uh, the Nikita Petrov um, from he's Russian. He's Russian. He, he I think he has a reasonable position. But okay, I think that the, this game is very interesting and still has a long way to go. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's still basically equal, to be honest. Yeah? yeah. I there is no obvious target for Simon to attack with the white pieces. Black cannot take easily on. White, black does not generally want to play f takes e5 until it sort of favours him. He wants to maintain the tension. I tend to think he'll castle queenside and play king v8 and continue the game. I think we can go on now to the, the game between Tata Abrahamian uh, from... Tata Abrahamian against... From uh, uh, United Grandilius. States now yeah. against Grandmaster Niels Grandilius from Sweden. Is it uh, Norwegian Grandmaster, Simon Agdestein, who we had had that large space advantage, but there was no obvious targets. Uh -huh. they've, they've just reached, oh, they've just reached, of course, uh, the time control. Yet again, we always have these games that the time scramble sometimes decides the game. And Simon is a frequent time trouble uh, offender. Yeah. We had this position earlier. Well, uh, al mm -hmm. almost 20 moves have, uh, have passed. Yes, so. yes, so we'll play through them quite uh, quickly. 
But you can see that uh, White has a space advantage, but no concrete uh, targets yeah. just yet. Well, it's time to look more like a good French for, mm. for Black with mm -hmm. good knight here. This knight can come here. And the bishop on f2 yeah, is hitting its, hitting its own pawns. Yeah. And for me, this is always the key in these positions. Is my dark squared bishop actually good mm -hmm. for Black? And of course, Black has gotten rid of his usual problem child, yeah. which sits on c8. So having so all these black pawns and white squares. Looks good here. Yeah. So this position on move 28 looks very good for Black. Nikita Petrov. Uh, Rook H8. So naturally, uh, Simon is trying to yes, uh, get some stir some play. trouble. But here, black just looks uh, quite solid, to be honest. Takes, takes. And yeah, he decides to. Uh, well, he, I think he, he knows give that. Give up a piece here with Nazi 5. I is his position really that bad, though? I mean, I guess the bishop on f2 and the pawn on d4 are two problems that will not mm. go away. And uh, I have to... If you take on a7, I'd just probably go king e8. Uh, I will run, run with my king here and mm -hmm. you... Yeah, yes, yes, the knight is in... The knight. If you go here, you lose it immediately. Oh, so the maybe, maybe the knight's king, in trouble anyway. Yeah, yeah? you play king e2, Queen I give you a check here and you lose it anyway. Okay, so maybe the knight was already, uh, already destined not yeah. for this world. <laughs> yeah. So, so he tries to... So here, uh, you, yeah, you start to feel a draft here of yes, king e2, yes. so I mean... Oh. And now you have the queen and knight uh, ah, yeah, combining for the attack. So he decides to go for drastic measures here, giving up the piece with knight c5. At least he gets a pawn here, maybe some some chances. Unfortunately, but, uh, as soon as I see queen and knight attacking the white king. Yeah, unfortunately, black can start giving checks, and the worst he can do is uh, perpetual. But no, but I. Uh, yeah. uh, I think. He should be able to do better than that. He uh, repeated once, but I suspect... Okay, but now they've reached the time control. Yeah, he did that to reach the time control, and now... He will have a little think here. I, I, I must uh, assume that Nikita Petrov is winning this game. I mean, not only is he a piece up, but the Queen and Knight usually combine very well. Mm -hmm. He just has to avoid the, the, the threat of C6, for example. Yes. And, and now how do we do it is another matter, of course. Yeah, we have to be careful because if we give White the move, then, then he starts. Yes, well, C six is on, and um, okay. Uh, if the if the Black King could run away, it'd be fine. But at the moment, if you move the Knight to G six, he's got not only C six check, but Queen takes A seven, and and the King has to go to the back rank. And this is not. This is what Simon must have, of course. Uh, envisioned a position like this where the pawn on c5 would threaten c6 check. Mm -hmm. But even here, I somehow have to feel mm -hmm. that... So what happens, he played queen e4 check, and then he played queen d3 check, king e1. Can we just repeat that? Just What happens if queen f3 check? He goes to c2... No, no, he goes to yeah, e1. He has to go here. He goes here, we yes, made yes, it, yes. so here. Well... Well, we still have this minor problem of c6 check. This is, um, I assume it's a problem because... I'm, I'm wondering if we can defend like this. Uh -huh. but, uh, and then just go backwards. Go to d8. And but now... What are we threatening if... Uh, if we play knight takes if e5. If white just threatens mate. Knight. And knight takes e5. And then right. threatening knight d3. Mm -hmm. And stopping all... Well, it doesn't stop all checks. Uh, but c7, king d7 doesn't seem to actually do anything, thankfully. But I've got bishop h4, which could be embarrassing now. Yep. Very embarrassing. I can't allow that. Yeah, actually, we have it right away. OK, so why don't we just play knight takes e5 immediately and then take it? Can we just do that? And then I'll, I'll add just two pawns up in the center if I have to. I'll play c6 you want to take. Well, I've got two central yeah, yeah. pawns. Oh, you can do this. Yeah, but then uh, maybe I'll run maybe the other way and... Uh, Oh, well, I, 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 well, I was going to say I, I might have been right, but that does actually mean that uh, I just think it's the best move. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's not enough. But queen takes a7, I, I think if c6 basically is check, knight takes, pawn takes, knight takes, I, yeah, I, this should uh, be easily winning. Yeah. Because we defend the knight and we're, we're in time to, to block here. 
So the pawns so, should decide. So if queen takes a7, king e8, and then I've got f7 very nicely. If I play c6 here, uh, maybe I give you a jack here. You have to go this way. And if I come back, knight c4 actually looks very strong all of a sudden, yeah. threatening queen d2. Oh, okay, queen d2 is a slight pain because I'm covering everything, in fact. Uh, can you do that? He says he can. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should be, should be, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not made, but yeah, then we pick oh up I the Maybe I can start taking pawn. pawns yeah, with yeah, check. Yeah, I can check. take pawns with check. Yeah, yeah. Always nice when you can take pawns with check. Yeah, this looks good for uh, Nikita Petrov. Okay, so uh, unfortunately for our Norwegian fans, I think this might be bad mm -hmm. for Simon. And uh, I think we're going to visit the game of Armenian Grandmaster Hrant. Melkumian, who, oh, who is a famous endgame player who doesn't seem to be getting his, uh, <laughs> his points. Well, he's he must be wondering that the, the water is... Uh, and this is a 